Hi, I'm Alex Boone. And I'm Justin Boone. And we're Boone Cabinet Installations. And today we're going to show you a very basic cabinet install. So today we have our custom commercial laminate cabinets that we specifically made for this conference room. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut out the carpet and make sure that the cabinets are sitting directly on the concrete floor. Let's get started. Now our filler goes all the way to the floor. So this will actually get cut where the filler ends up, which is right around here where my mark is. For now, we'll just leave it long, and then we can cut it after the fact. Same on this side. I could just simply measure out 24 inches and mark it. The issue you might run into is that the walls are not always perfect. And there's nothing guaranteeing that the back of that panel is going to be up against the wall. So we'll come back and snip that where we need it after the end panel goes on. Now we're going to remove the carpet. I got an additional three quarter inch toe kick that's finished that goes on the front. So I laid myself a little bit of room for error. So you can make it a quarter inch over and you don't have to worry about it because you got a toe kick that sits on top of the carpet. Now, so the reason is you want to have your cabinet end panels sitting directly onto the concrete or subfloor because that is what holds the vertical load of your countertops. In this particular situation, they're getting um, stone or granite countertops. So the cabinets have to be nice and level, and you have to have a nice substrate underneath for those cabinet end panels to sit on. Laminate, laminate you can set right on the carpet if you want it. Twenty-one inches out from the wall. downside you get it about a couple swipes and you gotta flip the blade. For those doing laminate flooring, absolutely do not set your cabinets on top of your laminate flooring, especially if you're doing stone tops. If you do, you're going to have a heck of a mess to worry about. A 
lot of the uh, stone company won't warranty the granite anyway. If you're on top of laminate flooring, because of the contraction and expansion. There's lots of contraction and expansion in laminate flooring. Therefore, when I get to a job and there's laminate flooring down, I have to just like this cut out wherever the cabinets are going. There are a lot of people that will set the cabinets on top of the laminate flooring. And I can't tell you what happens to those cabinets. We absolutely will not do it. All right, this is the fun part. Whoever these guys were, they did one heck of a good job laying this carpet. They had no shortage of glue. jobs now seems to be the trend There are some cases where they'll do the flooring or carpet after the cabinets go in. It's all based on the GC and the construction company that does the job. Obviously, we'd rather do it that way, but it doesn't always work that way. stuff good pair of floppers helps you grab it rip it up make sure you dispose of this properly don't burn it in your backyard <laughs>
you what, you did so good in that computer room putting the carpet down. It took me 30 minutes to pull up about half of this much. Mm. All right, just a rebrief on what we're doing here. Let the camera can zoom in over here. But as I got the cabinet stood up on its side, this is our toe kick depth, which is 20 and three quarter. And this is just the way we built this cabinet. So you wanna measure your toe kick depth and keep in mind, we have another piece of three quarter finish that goes on top. So I got three quarters of an inch that I left myself for room of error. So like I was saying before, if you wanna cut an extra additional quarter inch off the carpet, you're fine, you're covered. Uh, a lot of cabinet brands will use quarter inch material. Um, don't freak out. You can always pack that material out. Um, if you realize that you cut too much carpet and you need to cover it up, get your piece of half inch or an additional piece of plywood nail onto the toe kick, and then put your finished piece on top. Bring that piece out to dress on top of the carpet. Before you do any of this, you wanna make sure that you lay out your wall, remeasure, and make sure that you don't have too many cabinets for your area. Obviously, you don't wanna tear your carpet up yet if your cabinets are gonna fit. We've already done that. So we've got, we got 134 inches, and we've got three cabinets that we've made it 43 inches wide. That's particularly what makes them custom made cabinets. They're 43 inches wide and that's not typically a size you're gonna find out there on the market. Now, after we did the math, we come up with 134. And we've got 134. Um, I have a box filler on that end, on the right side, which we'll go over that when we get to it. And I have an, uh, a filler on the left, which is we decorporated a little different to match the column on the right. We'll get to that. Um, a lot of your cabinet fillers you'll see will dress to the height of the doors. In this situation we have it going all the way to the floor and later on you'll see why. Now, me and we're going under a 12 foot span. I'm not going to break out the laser level. Um, when you get an L-shaped kitchen or your span gets over a certain distance, um, U-shaped kitchens particularly, that's when you want to break out the laser level. Um, in most cases you have to. So this is all new construction. Floors are really good. Um, the floor is almost perfect, but there's never been a job that I've been on where there's not a shim somewhere under the cabin. It's just not in the cards. There's no floor that's perfect. There's no ceiling that's perfect. That's just the way it is. But we're going to make sure our cabinets stay level no matter what. So next I'm checking for studs. If you don't have a stud finder, you can also use a magnet. If you have a magnet laying around, um, a lot of guys do it. The, but the only thing about the magnet is, unless you have a metal stud, you're just pinpointing where the screws are into the stud. It works, it just might take you a little longer. Not everybody has stud finders laying around the house. I'm gonna go through and mark out my studs. Most of your cabinets, today's industry is 34 and a half tall. Um, a lot of vanities anymore, 35, uh, 34 and a half now. It's all based off an inch and a half countertop that nobody gets anymore. To finish the top of your countertop out at 36 inches. Now everybody still makes them 34 and a half, including us. Um, most of your tops going on now are only inch and a quarter. Um, but if you ever were to put a laminate top on these, then it does dress back out at 36 inches. Level line across here. And if you notice, we got a window to the right. Not very typical in a house or even commercial. We're working at a college today, so it's a commercial job, obviously. One of those things I had to do something a little different now time to find the studs now what I do everybody's got their own way of doing it 
what I do is I go through and I mark the stud around where this locates it. And the reason I say around, because these things are not entirely accurate, it gets you in the neighborhood. I make a little mark on the wall, and you notice I draw my level line. Keep my marks underneath it. That way you can do all the drilling you want, and it doesn't matter, it's gonna be covered up with cabinets. You come above the line, you go above six inches, then you gotta have somebody come and patch your drywall. So you just stay below your cabinet line, you can drill all, all you want, just be careful, obviously you don't wanna hit pipes. Um, so anyway, we'll go through this. One more here. Probably not going to hit it on the cabinet though. We got a two and a half inch filler there, two and a half inch filler here. And being that it's new construction, typically what I see in new construction, the studs are pretty consistent of being 16 inch centers. Um, some of the older houses in the area, not going to be the same deal. Older remodels, there's no telling what you're going to run into. Those, you have to have one of these. These are metal studs. Should be metal studs. I get a situation where it's metal studs, it happens all the time. Um, um, particularly out in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, done quite a few jobs. For whatever reason, they use 22, or they use studs on 22 inch centers out there. It doesn't give you a lot to hang a cabinet off of. If you run into that case, the base cabinet is okay. You just need something to hold it to the wall. Metal studs are fine. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll put one, I'll double them up, one above the other. Um, the upper cabinets on the other hand, in today's day and age, um, you know, a single cabinet these days could be a couple hundred pounds. So um, you don't want to rely on 22 inch centered metal studs so much to hold the weight of the upper cabinets. What can usually happen in that case is you end up cutting the wall out to put blocking in between the studs, to put the drywall back and then hang the cabinets. And I know it sounds like a lot of work and it is, uh, that's just something, if you're not doing it at home, you're going for someone else, you'll have to work that up charge out with them at another time. So, let's watch some move forward. Check forty-three. So we got three cabinets here, and the idea is we want our filler distances on each side to be the same. Now, if you're not with me on what a filler is yet, don't worry, we'll go over that. It's pretty simple, filler. It fills in the space that's not filled in with cabinets. Um, now this is something new we don't see all the time is that we're right up against a window. Here we got a window seal and then we have the aluminum track for the window itself. That cannot be impeded so we can't go just cutting cabinetry out into the window opening. Not only that there's a parking lot you actually see up into this building. So this is a finished side here where I know the only ones that see it are down there in the bushes. It's a finished side here and a three inch column on the front. Sorry, two and a half. Ideally, we want the filler here to be the same, two and a half. Now, three cabinets means one's got to be in the middle. So, the way I do it is I get my measurement across and find center. And then you mark center of your center cabinet, and that's where the center of your center cabinet's going to go. Now, we are based off of this window seal and not the window itself. So if we have to be careful on marking that, I'm not pulling my tape off of here or the glass. There's actually a window seal down here. That's where we're coming off of. We can't go beyond that. You just need one little mark for your tape measure.
these are the cabinets we made. It's a plywood, um, double set laminated, uh, two-sided plywood. Um, it's got a liner laminate on each side of it. Uh, works as a melamine. This particular job architect called for plywood on the job. They don't want plate board and they don't want melamine. So uh, a lot of commercial jobs, you'll see melamine and some of them like this, particularly they do not want melamine, they want all plywood. That's what we got. Um, good time to give a shout out to our boys at Harbor Imagination Tech in Tampa. Um, that's where we get all our supplies from. Um, most people I've worked with, that's where they get their supplies from. They seem to have a better bargain. That's just who we go through. Um, you might find somebody out there better and cheaper, but um, great bunch of people out there and they have about, I think six locations in the state of Florida. Um, out of state, I wouldn't know what to tell you. So we're gonna start with our first cabinet. We mark the center of our wall. We've got one, two, three, we've got a center cabinet. So we just need the center of this cabinet. So we'll have 43. 21 and a half. You're gonna line that mark up with that mark at the center. Now, after I do that, I'll still double check and pull my tape from each side to this face and make sure I'm consistent on each side. Obviously, if we had four cabinets and not three, this would be different. You wouldn't be marking the center of this cabinet. You'd be putting one of the sides to the center. That's for another show. Just anybody be handling cabinets by themselves. I've been doing this for 26 years, so I just don't care anymore. Um, not so much the weight factor. Yeah, these things do get heavy, um, and it would be bad for your health, but it's bad on the cabinet. Um, two people picking the cabinet up, pick it up evenly. You're not ricking the thing out of square. Um, these cabinets are empty. So we've taken the doors and everything off. They're not very heavy, but even with that, you'd much rather have two people grab it from both sides rather than one person grab it from one side. I do it anyway. So after I've got it in place, I double check my measurements. Just keep in mind down here, we're at the seal. So 45, three quarters here, and 45 and a half here. Go a little that way. Keep in mind, when you're in the back corner of your wall, it's measuring. They're never consistent. You have a lot of drywall mud. So the drywall mud will cove in and sometimes throw off your measurement. So even after all that, you still want to consistently measure the front. And this is so we can keep our fillers the same on both sides. Remember, what happens that back corner, we don't care. It's covered in entombed in countertops. It's the front that's going to be exposed that's more important. So if that wall back there toes in or out, it'll throw your reading off, but you always keep measuring. I can't explain why, but 90% of the jobs I go to, when you set the cabinet in the wall, you'll notice the that the cabinet will lean forward. For whatever reason, even on the finished concrete, um, the floors tend to go upward toward the walls. Um, seems to be on every job I'm on. And yes, your cabinets need to be level. You ignore what the floor is doing. You ignore what the wall's doing, you ignore what the ceiling's doing. Um, you're never gonna find a true ceiling, you're never gonna find a true wall um, or floor, so don't waste your time. Um, when you get a jam, 
laser level is your best bet. But um, of course, we worked years without them, so there's always a way to do it. Um, it's pretty basic. Um, we know the front's got to come up so it tilts back. But at the same time, we're going to keep an eye on what you're doing right to left. Not bad. shims here is I gotta get level this way too before I get started this particular case that back corner is gonna touch the ground and then the other three are gonna be shimmed up well the back corner one is the one you can't get to right so the first thing I do is I put my shim in there like that so I get level where I want it it's pretty good where it's at and you can either just take your pencil, mark it, pull the shim back out, cut it on a saw. If you want a nice clean cut, what I do, why it's in there, I just quickly score it with my razor knife, pull it back out, break off the amount I need. And that should accommodate your next cabinet. So you're not trying to get into a corner you can't get into. Now keep in mind, that's on cabinets where the code toe kick is already covered up. If you notice, we have no toe kick spaces covered up here. We have one solid toe kick that goes on after the fact. So technically under our cabinets, yes, you can reach under and put a shim. This is for most cases of cabinets where they'll have a piece here covering for structural reasons and you can't reach your arm under there. I just wanted to show you guys that. Now the front ones, it's easy to get to because you can just get to the front on either cabinet. It's just particularly the ones in the back corner you can't reach. And we know we be back towards the wall. We got a two foot level and a four footer, and then we got an eight footer. I recommend a six. I don't know where ours is, but sixes are great to have in the cabinet industry. Cabinets have a toe kick in the front. I just can't do what I'm doing. You're just gonna put the, you'll put the shim in through the front direction. And I cut them inch and a half wide, the width of two by four. So you can actually get both cabinets on that shim if you need to. There's times that cabinets will be what we call scribe to the floor. We'll get to that on another episode. Make sure the dimensions are still good. Some guys go good enough 
on a level. Um, and I guess for some applications, that's okay. We don't do that. We need that bubble perfect in the middle. Um, no maybes, no close enough, no that's good enough, no. Dead set in the middle. Um, the reason I say that, maybe on this application you can get away with it, but you'll get in trouble on a kitchen if you just let one cabinet go and say, ah, that's good enough. You might not notice things till you get halfway done with the job, and then you realize that one cabinet you just let set out a level just a little bit was good enough is now screwing up your whole job. So try not to practice that. So I need more shim here. We'll use an impact driver and a regular screw gun. Now, in the cabinet industry, everybody uses square drive, Robeson, whatever you want to call it. Square drive tip number two, if you can see that. Also, we have here regular Phillips bit for any hardware if we run into that problem. And this is the countersink bit. Um, this is going to be for the screws that we apply the cabinets together and screw each panel together with. We're using an inch and a quarter um, self-tapping wood screw um, that we bought at Hardware Imagination. Um, that's where we get all our screws. Your main screws that you're ever going to use in cabinetry these days are the inch and a quarter and the two and a half, whether it's a uh, washer head or flathead. Those are your primary screws. Um, but you'll find that we use several different sizes of screws. Those are your primary ones you'll use the most. Um, two and a half, typically you'll use those for uh, screwing the cabinet to the wall. But even in an instance where you have face frame cabinets, the two and a halfs are perfect to screw frame to frame. So, also, you'll need a 3 16 through bit this is actually got a countersink bit attached to it but the bit itself is a 3 16 that's a through hole and what I mean by through hole is you don't want to just mark your cabinet and drive a screw into it you've screwed up already if you're doing that you need to pre-drill everything especially the screws going into the wall if you don't what happens is people try to drive the screw into the back panel and it pushes the cabinet away from the wall before the screw sets and starts to pull it back it's not the right way to do it Pre-drill, pre-drill, pre-drill. Pre-drill all of your holes. There's two ways to approach this. Okay, now on a commercial job, I have plenty of fast caps. So typically what I will do is I'll put the screws where I need them and then I will fast cap over them. Fast caps, they're a 9 16 white cap, matches the melamine, and you just pop over top of the screw head. Now the other way to do this is there's a certain amount of clearance between the hinge plate and the front edge. I don't know if you can see it here, but right here, you got about five eighths of an inch distance between this hinge plate and the front, which gives you just enough room to pre-drill for a screw. So you can put a screw here in front of that hinge plate and in front of this one, and it hides your screws and you don't need, any, once your hinge goes on, it's gonna hide your screw. You won't need a fast cap for that. If you don't feel you need to screw it anywhere else and those two screws are all you need, well then you're covered. Um, most of the time I try to put five to six cabinets, or sorry, five to six screws in each side. So we'll go through this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide two of them. One will be exposed, but the ones that are exposed will get fast cap. You don't pre-drill and countersink, don't even bother. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one right here in the middle that we're gonna fast cap. Then I'm gonna do one here, and then one all the way in the back. And then the same on the other side.
one thing I did miss to, I need to mention. Before we go too far, we got away from the marking out the studs. I got a little ahead of myself. So, where I put that pencil mark is just where the stud finder starts making noise at. It doesn't mean anything to me because I want to focus on finding the center of the stud, particularly on studying the upper cabinets. It's exactly why I do it. I mark here, but my stud's actually over here. So that's going to be the center of our stud. See, so really, ideally, you want to drill in there until you hit each side of the stud, then you know where the center's at, obviously. This one will do the same thing, I'll just go to the top of the cabinet. Got the countertop covering over it, so it'll be good. Your cabinet installer just starting out. FYI, there are some customers that do not like seeing the holes in their walls, no matter what you try to tell them. Um, so if the cabinet's gonna sit for a while and the holes are not gonna be covered up for a while, you might wanna hide them. Um, in this particular case, I know that they're gonna have a countertop by tomorrow sometime covered and all that. No big deal. lift up a little on your cabinets for sliding in you don't want to take your other shins you've already got out and knock them out of the way and you can see here in the end panel it's going down on one side, so we're going to shim that right side up. Should be good. Now, I made my end panels 34 and a half because um, I kind of knew how this job was going to go. Um, would be a good idea. Um, if you're not familiar with the job, to make your end panels a little taller. Um, what happens to the toe kick doesn't matter. We made our toe kick five inches tall, so I'm gonna take it out of the table saw and rip it to whatever height we need it. Um, the end panels are more important. They have to touch floor and countertop. So if you end up shimming your cabinet up too high to for your panel to accommodate the end, you might run into a problem. And that's where you actually might have to scribe the cabinets down, meaning um, rather than shim the cabinet up, that same amount of shim that you would put under there would actually be cut off of the toe kick on the adjacent side. Um, we can walk through that on another job. We're not doing it in this job. The 
one. Now, if you ever get a big heavy cabinet, oven cabinet, pantry cabinet, just too heavy and you're by yourself, um, and it's too much trouble to drag the cabinet back out to lay a shim on the floor. Um, usually what I'll do is whatever piece of material that the cabinet manufacturer put in there to apply your toe kick to, um, if they're dowel rotted in, I take a flat saw, I cut the dowel rods, I take the piece out, throw it away, whatever. Um, you're talking about a $2 piece of wood, so you don't want to have to hold up your whole job. So if that case happens, you just knock that piece out, cut it out, get it out wherever you have to, and then you can just reach underneath. Um, you know, if the cabinet's light enough, just take the cabinet back out. But like I say, there's times where the cabinet's so tremendously heavy, um, you know, you could be sacrificing so much as far as damaging walls or floors, it's not worth dragging back out. Sometimes it's just easier to knock that cheap piece of flake board or whatever they put in there. Just knock it out so you can reach your arm underneath there. You're going to be covering this whole thing anyway. Tops. This ain't always necessary. You could you could leave the cabinets out of whack, screw the countertop down, and it's not going to hurt the top. But on a Euro box, where you're going to run into problems too, is you're going to have doors that'll never get adjusted. Um, it's very key that on Euro style cabinets, meaning there's no face frame. The only face frame is this one three-quarter finished edge throughout the whole cabinet. That's a Euro box. Um, or face frames a little more obvious. You'll have a face frame that goes around whether the door covers most of it or not. Uh, a lot of the face frame cabinet jobs, you have a lot more variance between doors and panels. You have more room for error. So if your cabinet box is set at a square, which you don't want to do, but if it is, you have a few more outs as far as being able to pull it off. With the Euro box, it's a lot harder to do. Um, usually end up with an eighth inch reveal between each door or panel. Um, a lot of the jobs I do now, the Euro sets, um, they all have an inset look. So not only will you have smaller spaces between door to door, but whatever panel or fillers on the end, um, now a lot of them bump out and they call them overlay fillers, which is where the filler will actually dress out flush to the doors. Now this particular job don't call for that. So we'll get to that on another head. job. Robeson square drive number two screw. And then this is a two and a half self tapper washer head Robeson screw. Okay, these we're gonna use to anchor to the wall. These are for cabinet to cabinet. You got two pieces of three quarters, inch and a half. So inch and a quarter ensures that it don't go through the other side. Clamp, make sure you clamp the face frames together or 
side panels together. Nice and plush. Make sure you set the screw head. You want to be just a little less than flush. You want to countersink the screw, not too much. If you have to back it out and you go too much, you're going to end up backing it out and delaminating the material. So you don't want that to happen. So just baby the screw in. If you're new at this, baby the screw in until you get it flat. If you notice the screw didn't push the part away and then pull it back together and that's because the through hole we put is just a little bigger than the screw itself so when it goes through the first end panel it's just going to spin until it catches the second end panel which you didn't drill through and pull it together so here we're going to do the, we're going to attach the box column on first and you'll see why here in a second. This is our box column filler. Um, it's called that because obviously it has a return here. It's not technically a whole box. Um, also, we're going to be flush to the face of the cabinets on this particular job. On a lot of jobs, um, this will actually stick seven eighths of an inch proud of the cabinet box so that this part flushes with the doors. We're not doing that in this application. So this will actually just be flush to these boxes. Um, if you notice down here, we were short on material. So this little piece I put here is just for the toe kick opening, just so it's laminated. This piece of laminate here was just so when I routed the laminate, it kept it nice and straight. It won't be seen once it's put on. Up, oh, we'll skip a step. Just like the uh, cabinet boxes when you put them together, go ahead and pre-drill first and get that mess out of the way and then apply your box filler. <clears throat> And this one particularly, there's only so many places to screw this one in. It's got a spot in the back. All right, same idea. You know, you want to try to hide whatever screws you can. Um, like I said, in my case, if I can, I have fast caps. Not everyone has fast caps laying around.
there's a problem. Let me go run this through the saw. All right, what I ran into is, I'll show you a mistake I made. Front's two and a half, that's correct. And for whatever reason, when I put this cleat on the back, it's a little proud of two and five eighths. So what I'm gonna do is just go stand this up to the table saw, rip an eighth inch off that, I'll be right back. All right, back to where we were. This is our box filler. Hold it up a little bit. All right, for those at home wondering why to go to all the trouble putting that big box filler, why not just finish the side of the cabinet? Well, you can do that. The only problem is it puts your door swinging right up against here, and it doesn't give your door a lot of room to function. So yeah, they could have just had us finish the side and put the cabinet up against there, but just keep in mind, it puts your door too close to here, and your door would be rubbing every time you went to open. And it's just gonna be closer to here. So by doing a two and a half inch box filler, it gets the door and everything away from that window and this window seal at the bottom. And the finished side pertains to mainly, as silly as it sounds, the reflection and outside. Uh, really nobody's gonna see it, but I guess in theory, the window washer might see it. So that's why the side's finished. Um, if Alex, if you zoom in to the top, it gives them a little better idea of how that thing's constructed. And, you know, the majority of it's scrap material um, because you're laminating it. So we just do, when you're cutting your sides of your cabinets, um, if you find any drop material that is within uh, 23 and a quarter, which this one was, um, you can just add a piece to the front, making the depth of your cabinet. and 
um, just a three-sided box is all you need um, then a cleat in the back um, in cases where we have plenty of material we'll just go ahead and make a complete box makes sense you laminate both sides in this case we we're very tight on material so we just made it a minimum of what we needed and once again that little piece on the bottom I don't know if she can zoom out enough but before our toe kit goes on it's just so that this inside piece here near the toe kick is laminated because if that's not laminated unless it all gets done and you have this white piece showing down there it'll show bigger than worse than a sore thumb if you don't laminate that piece so prior when i had the piece off that's what that was all about um and it was a piece of scrap um anything you know three inches by five inches stick it on there you know before you laminate the face um, doesn't seem like much, but it makes a huge difference. Okay, I'm going to proceed. All right, shooting down the toe kick. Um, went quiet there for a little bit. Had to plug up the air compressor. Um, it's loud, I'm kind of analog still. Um, a lot of people are using the battery powered stuff, which is awesome. Recommend it. Uh, I've used an 18 gauge gun because my pin nailer's down. Um, preferably use an inch and a quarter pin nail. And it always helps to Put a dab of silicone too you can um, and just pin nail these on and it's three quarter laminated so it's pretty tough
Time to screw them to the wall. Multi tool. I'm going to cut these shims off. It's time to snap on the doors. They're Euro hinges, so I just snap on. We'll go over the adjustments here in a second.
right, all these Euro hinges have adjustments. Um, they actually sell a tip, it's a Euro tip. Um, I just use a Phillips. All these Euro hinges have adjustments. So, start this one. We back that out. It brings the door hinge this way to make this opening grow more. It brings the door back this way. You have another adjustment back here. Just give me an example. Let's door go in, let's door go out. Now, if you set your cabinet out of square, you're gonna have to use that. What happens is if the you shut the door and say the bottom touches but the top don't, it means you're setting it out of square, you'll have to use that adjustment. Final one's on the plate right here it moves the plate up and down this way. So you, you can see it moves the plate up and down. So it adjusts the door up and down this way. So what you wanna do is check your adjustments on the end here. First, I know I have a bigger gap at the bottom. So I'm gonna bring this one in. And it should close the gap. So that's so. Now, what I want to do before we go too far is get all the doors on and kind of go through all of them, make sure we're keeping them consistent. to watch this video um, but if you're wondering to where where's the shelves and bumpers it's probably wasn't open today so you gotta wait till tomorrow um, they also get drilled for locks so that'll be fun um, but uh, basically that's it um, and that's one of our cabinets um, we make boot installations commercial grade um, hit us up give us a like if you like it and that's it have a good one